some of Britain's most beautiful historical bathhouses are becoming victims to the developments of new leisure pools and health centres. These leisure pools do not provide the space or need for competitive swimming and water polo, so councils have stopped putting funds into historical baths as they are deemed no longer useful. This series will look into a variety of listed bathhouses, their current situations and what's in store for the future. It's time to take a backstroke in time. Victoria Baths is a Grade 2 listed building located on Hathersage Road in Manchester. It was described as the most splendid municipal bathing institution in the country and provided the residents of Manchester with extensive spacious facilities for swimming, bathing and leisure. It's one of the 116 listed baths buildings in Britain, most of which were built before 1936, with only 52 being refurbished or in operation. It was opened in 1906, it cost £59,000, it was known as Manchester's Water Palace um, and it served the local community up until 1993 when it closed um, and then was kept going by local volunteers, protest groups, you know, so it was a community, community strength that kept it going. The community strength meant the creation of a team of volunteers and the Friends of Victoria Baths. It was these people who set it upon themselves to save the baths and over time restore the bathhouse to its former glory. Being a friend of Victoria Baths, um, it just involves their friends meetings and basically it's anybody who wants to sign up, who has an interest in the baths. Maybe you want to be a friend but not a volunteer. Um, maybe you just want to support the baths um, with, with no other commitments at all. So sign up and be a friend. Um, just means that uh, you can come on all the open days, um, free access and, uh, and you get up-to-date information about how the restoration project is developing. The volunteers at Victoria Baths have a number of different roles and stories about how they got involved with the baths and how they're involved with the restoration. Being a, a volunteer at Victoria Baths, there's, there's a lot of roles that can go on. Um, my role is mainly in the tea room area on the open days that we have and I got to know the people here and they made them feel friendly and they were asking for volunteers and I thought well I only live round the corner I'll come along give it a go if I don't like it then I don't have to stay I suffer with depression anxiety and a nervous breakdown I was suicidal, a binge drinker, and all that's gone now. And it's through my recovery that I've got into being in Victoria Bass. And to me, this building has given me so much back. I'm just trying now to give them, this building something back. Restoration phase one, as they call it, was when they won the restoration program on television and the, the, three, the three million pounds they got then had originally been intended to use to restore the Turkish baths but because the front part of the building was in a bad condition they had to use it on the exterior and the chimney um, and so there's been a long process of, of little bits of things happening and lots of strategic meetings and lots of studies being done um, so it's probably two years ago now that we decided to carve out what we call in phase two, which is to restore these Turkish baths, to create some modern treatment rooms in the basement, <clears throat> and the four bedroom superintendent's flat turn that into modern accommodation. So that's phase two, but we're already thinking about phase three, which would be the restoration of one of the pools. I mean, the, the ultimate vision is to restore the whole thing. I mean, if we can get it up and running, and it'll be brilliant. It, it's lovely because it's been stood still for 10 years and everybody said, well, you, you know, you've got the lottery money. Why haven't you opened a pool? And before I understood why, where the whole of the, the money had to go for, for first, it was basically it had to make the building safe because the building had been shut for 10 years and not a lot of people understood that. The building is now a hub of activity for open days, tours and a number of special events for seven months of the year, bringing many visitors to the bathhouse.
Well, we have Wednesday tours every Wednesday afternoon um, and then when we have open days, which are now the second Sunday of every month apart from August, um, people can book in for tours then. Football, table tennis, I was played here. And they use this system that had been used in the past to turn the gala pool into a dance hall. Not only was the gala pool used as a dance hall after it was boarded up, it was also an indoor sports hall, making it the perfect space for bowls, badminton and netball, to name a few. There are open days and then there are things like heritage fairs. We've now got very, very popular gin festivals and beer festivals. So there are, the place is being used as an event space, so people booking in. Um, the other thing, the filming, which is a really good thing for us, that's the most lucrative thing we do, um, but that's as and when. You know, we, we, we don't go out and find them, they come to us. So, uh, you know, some years we have very good income from filming. I don't know if you're supposed to say this, but things like Peaky Blinders and even Coronation Street and whatnot. When they do the filming here, they actually change the whole of the area where they're using. You wouldn't believe it belonged to Victoria Bass. It's the tiles that give it away. The bathhouse is still adorned with picturesque stained glass windows, beautiful mosaic floors patterned with aquatic images, and dark yet vibrant green ceramic tiling. These exquisite features are something that, aside from memories and the history of the building, draw visitors in to revel in the building's beauty. I like engaging with the people that come on the tours. I thoroughly enjoy showing off Victoria Baths, um, all its nooks and crannies and the beautiful parts of the building um, and explaining to them uh, the history and, um, and about the restoration project. My favourite part of the tour mostly is stopping on the landing of the male's first class balcony um, and the stairway up and if I have time, I make sure all the tour group have to share that moment with me by making them stand on that staircase and look down at the mosaic tiles and how they contrast to the females' entrance where um, they're not mosaics, they are uh, terrazzo flooring. Um, but I, I just revel in the beauty of those Pilkington tiles from the ceiling right down to the, uh, the stairwell. It's my favourite part of the baths at the moment. It's safe to say that Victoria Baths is well loved and in great hands for its maintenance and restoration, shown by a variety of people who love and care for its walls and everything in it. The best thing about the baths is actually seeing it being open again. Um, obviously not for what it was originally used for, for like the Turkish bath area and the, the swimming pools area because we haven't got the funding for that. But actually seeing people walking, having a look round and the venues that we have. So at least the building is still being used and not being left as to rot. I think the best thing about it is its history and, and, and the individual people. As I say, if you, if you, if you, man, that, if you man this Turkish bath restroom on an open day and people come in and talk to you, it's just endless memories. And I think, I, to me, that's the most important thing. Since the decision to fund the saviour and restoration of this beautiful building, there has been immeasurable amounts of research put into the history of the baths and its construction. But nothing speaks more about its history than the memories made by visitors to the baths during its glory days and the memories it's created in the present for both the public and the volunteers. I came to Victoria Baths in 1986. My daughter learned to swim here, she was only a couple of months old, and she's now 30. I think one of my favourite memories now will be when I brought my mum to an open day, and she's 96 in May, and this is only a year or so ago, and it was a sunny afternoon, and if you've seen the Angel of Purity window light up, and my mum came in and she couldn't speak. It's, it's just tears came into her eyes. It was so, she thought it was just so beautiful. So I, can't, I think I remember that. <laughs>